Unfortunately, I see five really big problems with matter, and the first one is what my friend Paul Hibbert likes to call corporate greed, and that's not going away anytime soon, and it will rear its ugly head with matter. Corporate greed. Corporate greed. Corporate greed. Corporate greed. Corporate greed. Corporate greed. Amazon recently released an Amazon Basics Smart Light Switch, which works with their voice assistant for its smart features. Today, if Amazon wanted to, they could have it work with Google and Apple and SmartThings and Hubitat and Home Assistant and more. The hardware inside can do it, and Amazon certainly has the team to create software to make it work those ways. But they didn't, and although they could make it work with the upcoming Matter standard, I don't think that's gonna happen. I also have become very concerned with what Amazon will be doing with Ring and Blink, as there have been exactly zero announcements from those companies about how they will be adopting the Matter standard. I'll talk more about why Blink hasn't later in the video, but Ring is concerning. I think over time, these kinds of choices will be bigger and bigger mistakes if companies do head down the path of trying to keep their smart home products only working with their own gear. Brands like Ring are large enough to keep their own customer base and work within a business strategy of segmenting the market, but there is a problem with greed that is exactly the reverse. See, Tuya has given rise to companies that can create a smart home product that is an exact duplicate of others in both hardware and software. Scarier yet is these companies can do this with no staff or know-how to support the product. This is rampant on sites like AliExpress. Product listings say Tuya and then there's some company name that nobody can reach. As such, they have literally no reason to update their products to matter, and so they won't in almost all cases. And it's things like this that I'm gonna show you will catch you when the matter standard comes out later in 2022. So stick around. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life, and I'm gonna do just that by making sure you're not caught off guard here by some problems I see with the upcoming matter standard. It's not that these things can't be fixed, and it's not that I don't think most people are gonna be doing the right thing, it's just that realities are sometimes ugly. But you know what isn't ugly? Today's video is sponsored by SwitchBot, and recently I spoke with them about the upcoming matter standard, and I know they're looking internally at what they can do with their products, but regardless, their gear works with just about everything in your smart home. They make incredibly difficult automations happen easily with moving smart home gadgets like their curtains, bots, and more. So go check them out in the links below. The first iteration of the Matter Standard has become something that will clearly frustrate many of you. And I think that it's an understandable approach from the industry, but it's still gonna be a pain in the proverbial behind. Now, there's a graphic here from what used to be called the Zigbee Alliance that shows the initial device types that will be released with version 1.0 of Matter. This means that devices you have in your home today, like a smart home camera or a smart home video doorbell, are not slated to work with Matter come day one. And I don't have any knowledge to give you on a release date for version two, and I don't know what other device types are even planned for that. The industry is so focused on version one that there's nothing out there for version two. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but it does leave some serious questions up in the air. So the device types that are missing from this list will become things that have to use those older methods of integration. This will give us two ways to have to integrate devices and it will split offerings between platforms still. It'll also make my job harder because I've gotta say yes, this device uses Matter integration or no, this one doesn't use Matter and I've gotta show you those different paths. So Google can still say that their Nest cameras really only work with their systems and this is why Blink hasn't given any information about Matter either. Sadly, I think this will leave some of those devices or appliances on the outside looking in. And I see nothing about air purifiers and diffusers and other appliances in version one. This is clearly such an issue for the industry that Samsung came out at CES 2022 and announced their own kind of alliance on appliances. 
they saw both a market need and a way for them to get a little bit ahead of the rest of the industry and clearly nothing coming in matter. For you, you're gonna have these two setup methods for a long time and this will still make things complicated to decide which platform to use for what. One of the biggest benefit of many of our smart home hubs is that they have this option for longer range devices. In many cases, that's Z-Wave, and Z-Wave can go about 100 feet if it's not being interfered with by walls, etc. And you can get repeaters that allow it to go out much further, and there's also a Z-Wave long range specification now that we can use in the future, maybe. But one of my favorite smart home technologies is LoRa because it can actually go a quarter of a mile away. It's also the reason Amazon Sidewalk can go so far. This is a huge benefit for lots of people, especially those of us who live outside the confines of a big city. Now, something that hasn't been addressed in the Matter Standard is how long range communications will occur. Wi-Fi and Thread are the communication technologies that most of us will use. Most of us can look at our own Wi-Fi signal today and see just about how far we're going with that. In my home, that is to the end of the driveway. Thread can have a similar range to Z-Wave, but it uses 2.4 gigahertz as its carrier frequency like Wi-Fi. And while it does have some technologies like direct sequence spread spectrum in it to help with things like interference, its expected range would be about the same as Z-Wave. It'll also have mesh network features like Z-Wave. So you will be able to create a lot of that distance, but Matter just doesn't have anything like LoRa that's going to reach really far outside your home. This will leave some farmers and acreage owners with existing problems that probably should have been fixed by Matter. And I hope the next version addresses this by either using LoRa uh, Amazon Sidewalk or Z-Wave Long Range. The problem is, even if they do that, people won't have the radios in most of their matter controllers, so this problem will still exist for a very long time. One of the biggest benefits of this new standard is the elimination of lots of apps from our phones and tablets. We won't necessarily need all of them and this will remove a layer of complexity from how we manage our smart homes. The dream is that we won't have to manage the integration between our apps, nor will we have to think about you know, so much where our automations are occurring. But there's a pretty big caveat with that anytime we think about our older devices. These are things I know I've bought to have for five to 10 years, but that might not be possible anymore. Unfortunately, those apps and even the method for integration we currently use will instantly be devalued when the matter standard comes out. When I think about companies like Google and how they handle software and, you know, in turn exiting markets like this, they tend to eventually just break the software and say it's over. Anyone remember Nest accounts? So companies that use that old method of integration will eventually lose that. Plus it means those companies have to keep updating things and they will have less and less reason to do that over time. And that's for that corporate greed reason we talked about earlier. It's not like they're gonna make more money from the sale of those products as the industry moves to really become matter only. So I do think that we're gonna experience some really ugly situations about two to three years after Matter's 1.0 release. Which brings me to the biggest problem, which is that some of the most popular products out there today will not get updated to become Matter compatible. This will cause something ugly to happen in your home that goes beyond that software problem we just talked about. The biggest one I've seen to date is probably the Google Nest Learning Thermostat. That's a product I would have expected Google to come out and say, hey, we know you've spent two to $300 on your home's thermostat, and we already have Weave on it, which is just another way to say thread for the most part, so we're just gonna update it to work with Matter. No such luck, as Google has said the exact opposite. Now, it would be near impossible for them to release a new thermostat and not have it be Matter compatible, since a thermostat is one of the device types, but they will release a new one soon. You're hearing it here first, a new thread and Wi-Fi based Nest Learning thermostat will come out either late this year or next year, and it'll probably have the Google Assistant on board, hence the Wi-Fi. As I said earlier, I have concerns about Ring. 
A lot of their products are using Z-Wave today as the communication technology, so they need to create new versions of those Z-Wave products to be Matter compatible. The other option for them is to make their current ring hubs or bridges into a Matter bridge. They've been quiet on that front and it's late in the game though. But the other big one I think a lot of you are expecting to be a possibility is the updating of Zigbee products to become Thread products. There are a lot of reasons to want that because you're going to see lower latency with Thread and some better distances as well as just moving with the rest of the industry. Plus, suddenly having a ton of products that connect to your Matter controllers directly would be really nice. Now, I have done some research with this and I think that I understand when it can happen and when it can't, but it's a murky trail and I'm not sure many companies are going to walk it. A while ago, the Zigbee Alliance made a deal with the Thread Group. They were working on ways to integrate their protocols and really if I look at things, the Matter standard is the result of that deal not doing enough. But that deal said that only ZCL devices could be updated to be thread compatible. There's a migration path between ZCL to Zigbee 3.0 and I believe those device types could get the update. This means many newer Zigbee devices do have a potential update path. I think the bigger question is whether or not the companies see a reason to update and I don't see it happening with 99% of products. In fact, Philips Hue was one of the first brands to come out and say they will be updating their platform and their Hue bridge to be a Matter controller. Theirs is a Zigbee system and unfortunately, they've said they will not be updating that system to Thread. So I think it's pretty clear that there are device problems with going from Zigbee to Thread and there's probably not enough reason for them to even do that. This will absolutely mean that we're gonna get new versions of products like the Philips Hue Bridge. And I'll make a second prediction now that version three of the Hue Bridge will be out either in late 2022 or 2023. And yes, it will be Thread and Zigbee. So if it's not clear, the biggest problem will be that you're gonna end up with a lot of new versions of products you already love and have in your home. So it's pretty clear that there are some big issues with the Matter standard and it's not going to be all perfect. But there are a lot of advantages and there is a way you can prepare. The way to prepare is to watch the video that's up on screen, which will tell you more about what Matter is and what you need to do to be ready. There's also a ton of other questions answered in our QA document that we prepared with that. So check out that link there for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.